What's up, y'all? So, welcome to episode one of Studio Vlogs. Something I'm trying new. You know, I'm trying to do something new, do different things, trying to keep myself energized and motivated, I guess. Um, these times have been a little unmotivating, and it's pretty easy to say why. You know, being a person who is a photographer, videographer that does work with brands in Colorado. And when there's no work right now, because everything's still pretty much locked down or shut down, you know, people aren't doing commercial jobs or anything yet. Um, it's been, it's been tough, not financially. I have one client that is amazing and I still do a lot of work for her. Uh, and I'm very grateful for it. Like very grateful for working with her and she does great work. You want to go back to the way things were, but at the same time, you know, that's probably not going to happen anytime soon. So I'm just getting used to this new, this new normal, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But so episode one of the studio vlogs, which is going to be a more laid back, casual, like sit down, talking head. They're all talking head, but really no B-roll or anything. It's just maybe like a little montage in the beginning, like you saw. Maybe not. I don't know. Again, this is, I'm just playing with this, trying to see what's, what's up. Uh, so there's a couple things I wanted to talk about today. One is we have WWDC coming up in a couple of days on Monday, actually. So I'm recording this Friday, the 19th, and it will be coming up Monday. So hopefully the goal for this vlog, the studio vlogs, is to uh, put it out the same day I shoot it. So try to put it out every other Friday. That's the goal. Pretty simple. Every other Friday, come up with some stories, some talking ideas, keep it, you know, hopefully no more than 20 minutes we'll see uh and this might be something bigger long t longer you know long term maybe this is a podcast i don't know but right now just playing around testing it out see how i like doing this uh so today i want to talk about things i'm looking forward to wwdc i'm using my panasonic g9 right now the, the 12 to 60 millimeter lens the last couple of videos I've been shooting on the Sony A7 II, and it's not known for a video camera, but I really do like it. So I want to talk about that, and and then also uh, some things that I found interesting interesting this week. WWDC coming up, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually I'm always looking forward to WWDC, not because I'm a developer or have any developing tools or traits or anything like that it's more i'm interested in seeing how apple is going to push ios and ipad os this year especially since last year they came out with ipad os all right so i'm really interested hold on so i'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to come out with in the ipad os now i have a couple of things that i wish they come out with uh, update the files app and it's like I'm glad we have the Files app, and I'm glad it works the way it does now, thanks to um, iOS 13. But there are just a couple like very specific things I'm looking for. One is a better way to see how much see the things that are taking up the most space on your iPad. Right? Uh, I use this iMac that's here in front of me, and the app that I use on here all the time is um what is this thing called oh clean my mac right and there's a bunch of apps that will do this on both ios and windows but they have a feature in here that's called uh i'm just opening it up here real quick it's called space lenses right will let you see how much what is taking up the most space on your ipad and you can drill down to like okay these files are here you know it goes from like here are the biggest files like folders in your on your computer and it drills down smaller 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 i would love something like that in the ipad so i have a 512 gigabyte ipad right now i'm using about 120 gigabytes worth of space which is perfectly fine but there are still things that i would love to see what's taking more like more space so the biggest thing i have right now is the files app is taking up 41 gigabytes so what is that 41 gigabytes well it doesn't tell you it won't break that down into like okay if you click on that or like in the 
settings app, click on it and say, okay, here's where um, the this these files or this folder within files is taking the most space. Or if you go into files itself, you can't see like how much what's taking the most space. I don't know, something like that. That would be so big for me. <laughs> and because I'm so obsessed about not not chunking up my iPad. Same with my computers, right? But I'm obsessed with making sure the things I need on the iPad and things I don't need, like um, old video files that are already used and like published, I just delete them off. I don't need them anymore. I would love to see that uh, in iPad OS 14. Uh, so another one would be better external monitor support. So right now, we're on the iPad, you can hook up an iPad to an external monitor, and it's pretty much going to mirror what's ever on your iPad, which is fine. But it gives you like the black bars on the side, and it doesn't really look all that good. There are a couple apps like LumaFusion, and I know there's a Mine um, mapping like Note app. I don't know exactly what's called that will take advantage of the second display. Now that the iPad has mouse support, trackpad support, you know, external keyboard, right? you'd be able to use a second display to have a second app, like a totally different app on there. Uh, I don't know how you'd implement that, but that's what they get paid the big bucks for. <laughs> so I would love to, um, I would love to have that in iPad OS 14. You know, that would be a really cool uh, feature to have. I wrote down, so I have a list over here. Uh, I wrote down multitasking, being able to, run things in the background to like Lightroom from importing a bunch of pictures. I would love to just let it run in the background while I did something else. I, I don't think that will happen. No, but that's like one of those like, oh, that would be great if it did happen. But really the big two things would be updating the files app, especially to see what like what's taking up the most space and uh, better external monitor support. So those would be the two things that I would want to see. Next up that I was thinking about was I am a big Adobe user. So I have the Creative Cloud. They don't pay me anything. They don't know I exist, but I pay monthly for that. I have to pay for the full uh, Creative Cloud. So I use Lightroom, Photoshop, and Adobe Premiere. It's probably really more like Lightroom all the time, Photoshop sometimes, and these days uh, Premiere very little much of the time, but I still use it occasionally. So I right now am paying $56 a month for the Creative Cloud plan or whatever it is. And it's an older plan, but I get all the apps, right? And you pay monthly. However, I don't use any of the other apps, which means I'm paying for something that I don't use. A lot of things I don't use. I don't use InDesign. I don't use, uh, I barely use Premiere. I use uh, LumaFusion on the iPad all the time to edit videos and even professional videos. And for me, you know, I'm not, I don't, a lot of my videos and the work I do is just like this talking head type of videos. So I don't, it's not demanding. I don't have a ton of LUTs on there. I don't do like all these crazy transitions or anything like that. So it's relatively simple in the way, like the way I make it work is relatively simple to the point where it works perfectly fine on an iPad. And even now I've built up workflows to where it's even faster on an iPad than it is to do it in Adobe Premiere for me. That's just, you know, how it is. But one of the cool features with um, uh, LumaFusion is you can export out to Final Cut Pro. So I've been trying to learn Final Cut Pro on and off probably for the last 20 days or something actually long, last month um i'm using lynda.com to to go through it it's a long tutorial but i'm i'm trying to figure it out and i have using the free trial and the cool part about uh final cut pro is it's a flat 300 dollars. once you pay for it it's yours when there's a new update you get the update that's it and I've been really thinking maybe this is the time that I just moved down to the Lightroom package. Now, the problem with that is I I like Lightroom Classic and uh, Lightroom CC or just Lightroom is called now. It, it just doesn't work for me. I think it's great. I think it, it could be good for a lot of people who who have come to 
uh, Lightroom for the first time. 100%, I think, Lightroom CC or just Lightroom, it's called, on the desktop works great. For me, Lightroom Classic works better because that's what I grew up using and I I like I like using it. I don't know what else to say. Like that it just works better for me and there's things that I can do in there that I can't do in Lightroom um CC. There's also I mean, one little thing which annoys the heck out of me is the some of the shortcut keys are different <laughs> in Lightroom Classic versus Lightroom CC or Lightroom Right, it, it it's I, that's just silly. But anyway, I digress. So I've been thinking, and again, I'm kind of processing out loud. But I've been trying to figure out if there's a way for me to just go down to the Photoshop and Lightroom plan and get rid of everything else. And in reality, I could probably get rid of Photoshop too and use something like Affinity Photo, which is right now on sale for twenty five dollars. And again, it's one of these apps that. You pay for once and you own it. So anytime there's a new update, um, anytime they make little updates to it, it's there. It's yours. Like you're good. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, so that is, that is been on my mind a lot. So I just have to figure out if I can keep a Lightroom classic in the Photoshop. Uh, Lightroom bundle that they have. And I think that's like only $10. And then I pay an extra $10 for uh, an extra terabyte of space within uh, Adobe's cloud service. That way all my pictures that I um, I designate to sync between my desktop, my iPad, my iPhone, oops, sorry about that, my iPhone, Android phone, Windows computer, Chromebook, anything will sync across. Um, and so right now I think I have like 33,000 pictures syncing and I have uh, a little over a hundred thousand pictures in my Lightroom catalog. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. But, you know, so anyways, you know, I've, I've been thinking about moving that way. And if you're someone who really doesn't use like Photoshop or uh, Premiere and even Premiere, if you didn't want to pay for Final Cut and you were like on a PC, you could use DaVinci Resolve. That's free and it's amazing. I just, for some reason, you know, I I don't use it, but I've heard people who've used it. At my brother in law, he uses it and it, he loves it. So that would be an option. And then you couple that with um, Affinity Photo and Affinity Design, I think it's called, which are both right now on sale for 50% off for $25, but they're regularly $50, which is still cheaper than a monthly payment to Adobe, in my case, right? Um, so I've been thinking about that. Maybe that's an option I go with. And I think you buy it, like Affinity Photo, I think you buy it one license per computer. So even if I bought it for, I have two computers, even if I bought it for both computers, that's 50, right now it'd be $50 for two licenses for both of my computers. That's pretty nice. Hey, real quick, I just want to break in here and tell you about our sponsor today, which is me. <laughs> I'm the sponsor. I don't have sponsors on this channel. I hope to never have sponsors on this channel. So I just wanted to plug my website, Kwame.me. I just got a new domain name, Kwame.me. Really easy to remember. I don't know why I didn't think of this before, uh, but head on over there. You will see like my gear list where all the stuff that I have right now. You can see uh, past videos I've been working on. I have photography sets that I've taken pictures of like San Diego, Senegal, uh, yeah, so head on over to my website, Kwame.me. Take a look around. Tell me what you think. Uh, again, I don't have sponsors in this video, so that'd be awesome if you guys could do that for me. And then lastly, speaking of gear, I've been thinking of changing stuff up. <laughs> uh, that is the dilemma of all photographers and creative people, right? We're always changing and fiddling around with things. And so I've been thinking about changing up my gear just because I, I'm really in love with the Sony a7 II. I think it's uh, an amazing camera and I've been looking at the uh, Sony a6400 or even 6100 to do these talking head videos and to do um, more videos like out and about. I even looked at this Sony, uh, what was it, the a7R2. Uh, that, that one has 40 two megapixels or something like that 
sensor. It can do 4K video, which this the Sony that I have can't. It can't. I've even looked at the Sony A3, thinking about like, well, what could I do with that? But I really like the Sony lenses and the Sony look, and I have nothing against this Panasonic G9. I think it's awesome and really amazing. That's why I'm shooting it right now to see what it looks like in low light because I turned off all the lights in the studio. Just have two lights here and plus the monitor there. See what that looks like. It does have eye tracking, but I've always felt like the tracking in this camera uh, is not as good as like the Sony, even like the older, like that Sony a7 II. The the face tracking is pretty good. It's I, I'm I'm for a five year old camera. I'm I'm pretty impressed with it. And then it also got me thinking because I'm not looking at the newest ones. I think you know an A7 R2 or the A7 uh, R3 will be great cameras that will go you know years and years and years without me having to upgrade it. And it's something about the full frame image that I really do like. And the thing with photography or anything creative, or actually anything in life, is you just got to do what makes you happy. And you got to do what, you know, don't worry about what other people say. Like, oh, you got to have a Panasonic GH5. Without that, you're not a real photographer or videographer, you know. Or you got to have the the biggest, you know, Canon, whatever the Canon lenses are, right? I'm, I moved to Micro Four Thirds because they were smaller, and I was able to achieve the things I wanted to achieve with them, and it was perfectly fine. Now I'm getting to a point where it's, you know, I'm the look and the photography that I want to do it struggles to keep up with, right? And that's where I've always looked at when do you upgrade your camera is when the gear that you have can't, like when you want to make a, a leap in the, your your progression and whatever you're doing, drawing, writing, whatever, right? Writing, maybe not so much, but like drawing or photography, videography, gear does matter to a certain extent. And I'm 100% one of those people who believe you can make amazing pictures and video with your cell phone. You don't need the a full frame camera, a Micro Four Thirds camera, you know, a point and shoot camera. You can make really good videos with these things here, you know, these little action cameras. So it's not about the gear in that sense, but it does become about the gear when you are constantly trying to get better, constantly trying to move forward, and what's holding you back is the limitation uh, is the limitations of your gear. So for me, I've been really thinking, is this the time where I kind of just go all in with Sony or do I um, wait a little bit and like maybe upgrade to a better lens? And even with that, it's like, I've been thinking maybe how, you know, how do I use the Sony and the Panasonic G9 together? You know, using one, I'd probably use the Panasonic G9 for uh, the video as like the A camera and then use my Sony as like a B camera. And then uh, for photography, use the Sony as an A camera, Panasonic G9 as the B camera, and then have different lenses, focal lengths on there. So... For the Sony, I was thinking of picking up the 24 to 105 and keeping that pretty much on that lens at all times. It's f4, so not the fastest lens, but I don't need anything past f4. Even right now, I'm shooting this at f3.6, and then picking up the Panasonic 100 to 400 for this camera, the Panasonic G9, and using that for like a telephoto lens, right? So when I'm not shooting these videos or shooting corporate uh, like event pictures or uh, doing video work for clients, my other passion and like what I really want to start getting back out and showing you guys is like wildlife photography and landscape photography. Being outdoors is just so nice for me. And it's one of those things where that's, you know, when I just need to recharge my energy, it's getting outdoors, get, walking around, but it would be nice to have those two lenses and just knowing that, okay, when I go out, the the uh, Sony 
I'm able to get wide angle shots and then get some telephoto shots. And then the Panasonic G9 would be great to be able to get the telephoto shot. So birds in flight, deer, fox, bison, things like that, you know, that you can't get too close to. But then I started thinking, well, it'd be great to film while I'm out there so I could tell you guys, you know, what I'm shooting with, how I'm shooting, what I'm looking for, that kind of stuff. And so I started looking at a, first I was like, well, I could get a, pick up a second Sony, like A7 R2, uh, the A7 III, but that was like, mm, that had went by the wayside pretty quick. But then I thought about the Sony A6100 or 6400, and really they're the same camera. One is just um, dust and water resistant, and the other one isn't in the build quality. Uh, that's really it. Like other than that, they really are the same camera for a little bit cheaper than um, than the Sony A6100 is a little bit cheaper. And so I thought about getting that one, and then that would be my uh, camera of choice. So whenever I'm doing any kind of talking head work or showing you what I'm shooting or editing a video or a picture, that would be the camera I would use. And I could even use it for professional work. So I could still use my Panasonic uh, camera as the A or B camera and now have the, uh, the Sony, the Sony A7, man, their names, the Sony A6100 or A6400 as the other camera or vice versa. Wow, well, you know, you guys know what I mean, right? <sighs> you guys, it's like I started, I was really going down the weeds in this. And I realized then, like, I'm looking at all this stuff, and I'm looking at all these gears, and like thinking, what should I get? What should, if I should get something, da 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 da? And it's like, I'm just bored. Like, it's really just come down to, I don't need any of this stuff. This is working perfectly fine. Thank you all for watching these videos. I may not have, I may never have a hundred thousand subscribers. I would love 100,000 subscribers, <laughs> but I, yeah, I may not get there. Uh, but, uh, you know, as long as I'm making quality videos that you guys are liking, whoever watching it is interacting, you know, that's all that matters to me. And so I'm really making a commitment to myself and to you guys of really, really focusing on this channel for the next, um, in my gut, I want to say 36 months, which is, I know a long time, but you know, this creating anything youtube channel a portfolio of you know photography video drawing getting better at golf whatever you're doing it takes time like i think because we live in like an amazon you know get your package now instant on watch something on you know name any app where you can just open it up and find something to watch we forget that things take time right and so it's going to take time to to find my style, to find my cadence, to figure out exactly what this channel is going to be. I have an idea in my mind, which I'm not ready to share yet, but I have an idea in my mind of where I want it to go. And I watched this video, and if I can find it, I will link it down below. Ira Glass was talking about the creative gap. And it's always, it's always stuck with me because it is so true. If you're a creative person, you're doing anything anything creative right there's a gap of where you want to be and where you are and the only way to close that gap is by just doing more work right you just got to keep going at it and there's going to be things that work out there's going to be things that don't work out but that's the only way to close that gap but the gap will never come like you'll never get them like ah i've reached perfection because as soon as you get to that level that you're trying to get to you will go back up and you will, there will be other things that you, um, that you want to get better at. And so there's always a struggle for creative people of like trying to get better and being satisfied, not satisfied, but accepting where you are now and, and then keep striving and working to get to where you want to be. But you never reach where you want to be because the, the goalpost keeps moving, Right. And that's just how it is in the creative world. It's like golf. You're not playing against a person you're paired against. You're playing against a course. You're playing, playing against yourself. Same thing with creativity. The other thing that I've always been struggling with, probably for like the last couple of years, like I'm way too old. Like I'm too old to be doing this stuff. This is 
YouTube is like a young man's game. But I've seen some amazing videos and content creators who are older than me. And they're doing it. So if they can do it, yeah, I can definitely do that. All right. I know this is a long video. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you in this format in two weeks. And I will see you in a new video every Tuesday. So that's the, that's my promise to you guys. Tuesday, you will get a new video from me. And every other Friday, you will get one of these from me. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.